So last week I, I preached into, so Pastor Marion several weeks ago, he launched into a series about two streams. Everybody say two streams. And that goes back to a word that God gave him over a decade ago, and uh, he'd gotten away, and he was just having some time alone with God. And I, I believe, if I get in the story right, he was walking in the backyard of his in-law's house and uh, praying, and, and God dropped this word on him. And he said, God said to him, that I'm bringing two streams together. Everybody say two streams. So what are the two streams? He said, I'm bringing two streams together, integrity and faith in my word and demonstration and manifestation of my glory. Now, God will speak to you individually and personally, um, and as long as you can check that according to the word of God, which has been thoroughly lined up, and so to be able to receive the word, integrity and faith in my word, it's pretty important, right? The word of God is life. It is alive, it is active, it is sharper than any two-edged sword. It can only divide soul and spirit. Like the word of God is powerful. In the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word was God. So we must have integrity, we must trust in the word of God. We must believe every word written in the word of God, and then we can't just believe it because faith without works is dead. We've got to have faith in that word to live by, are the righteous gonna live by sight or are they gonna live by they're going to live by faith, right? So we must have integrity and faith in God's word. Believe it to our core. Live it. Learn it. But then we also need another stream because a lot of people believe the word, but they, there's this other stream. And at the time when God dropped this, there was a lot of separation between people that were believing the word and operating according to the word and teaching the word, teaching the word, teaching the word, teaching the word. And then over here you had these demonstration and manifestation of God's glory. As I said last week, some of you grow up, grew up similarly, and some of you grow up in churches. This is my very, I don't know, it's probably not the best illustration, uh, but you grew up in a church that had, uh, the Holy Spirit was calm Uncle Bob. That's where I grew up. Calm, calm <laughs> Uncle Bob. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. I believe in miracles, Lord. I believe you can do the miracles. I believe you're high and lifted up. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Call him Uncle Bob. And then others of you grew up in an environment with crazy Uncle Bob. Hallelujah. Lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Let's dance. Y'all get that dancing thing? I'm like, ah, like, where did you get that? I don't even know. But like, <laughs> and I'm not making fun of either because I'm grateful and I honor my heritage. My, my wife, although my mother-in-law last week was, we didn't grow up in a crazy Uncle Bob church. You're, you're making that up. And I'm like, Martha, if you went to my church growing up, your church was like so far beyond crazy Uncle Bob. Like, and so there was this contrast. So two streams, everybody say two streams. Say coming together. We want integrity and faith in God's word. We want to know the word, live the word, believe the word, have faith in the word. And we want demonstration and manifestation of his glory. We don't want to get crazy and kooky. We want to do it according to the word. And we want the power of God, the glory of God, the presence of God, because better is one moment in his presence than a thousand elsewhere. And so we want to bring, see two streams coming together. Not either or, but both and. And so that was the word God gave him. And, and it's been a journey over a decade of learning and living into that and leaning into that and seeking the word of God and seeking the spirit of God and saying, God, teach us, Holy Spirit, teach us what this means and what this looks like. And to be honest, there's been times where we've swung this way and we've swung that way. And, and now we're like, thank you, Jesus, for teaching us how to walk in two streams. We're not doing it perfectly. Nobody's ever gonna do that except Jesus himself. But we're learning, and so just recently, God really released Pastor Marion to say, hey, it's time. And it's time to, to host a conference, to really preach into this, to not just preach into it, but this conference in three weeks, November 11, 12, is that right, 12, 13? 11, 12, 13, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. We'll start Friday night. It'll go Saturday, it'll go Sunday, all the way Sunday and Sunday night. It's the two streams conference. Everybody say two streams. <laughs> Look at somebody and say, you know what? Say it silly. Come on, say it silly. Yes. 
you don't want to miss this. And this has been, like, this is like, oh, we decided to do a, this is like, this is the, like mandate from God kind of stuff, like Holy Spirit led kind of stuff. This is like walking into a new level and, and to be able to express that, not just to whoever's in the room, but to be able to express a, a message from the Lord to say, hey, this is what it looks like. Two streams. Everybody said two streams. And that kind of circles us full back to the message I preached last week on the Holy Spirit. And you cannot live a lifestyle of the kingdom, which by the way, another way to say that would be, just to use the language, a two streams lifestyle. Like integrity and faith in God's word and demonstration and manifestation of his glory, that is a lifestyle of the kingdom. It's not supposed to be an event. It's not the conference, it's a lifestyle. The conference will express and demonstrate and teach into, but what we want you to grab hold of is a lifestyle of the kingdom, a lifestyle of living in those two streams. I want those two streams to come together in your life, in your children, in your business. Two streams coming together. And so I taught into the Holy Spirit because there are so many misunderstandings around the Holy Spirit. Can I get an amen? Amen. Um, Because it doesn't matter if you grew up in church your whole life or you didn't grow up in church and you're new to this thing, either way, you got baggage. Because if you come into a supernatural environment and you've never seen that before, it's just magic in church. What's going on here? And you see some things that you don't understand, and so all of a sudden you begin to put walls up that keep you from the supernatural. They keep Holy Spirit from operating in your life. And so you got back in there. Or you can take me, for example. I grew up in church my whole life, but the tradition in which I grew up, although I am grateful and my heritage is amazing and my family love Jesus. My dad's been a pastor for nearly 50 years. But there was the environment I grew up and there was kind of limitations put on how the Holy Spirit would express and show up and demonstrate himself. There just was. And so some of the things that, that God had to teach me and I had to walk through, some of these, like the baptism of the Holy Spirit that I taught last week, like I, I didn't get that until I was in college. And some of this miracle signs and wonder stuff, whoa. What's up with that? I'll never forget, guys. I was standing about here, and the stage was a little different, so people were coming up this way. Standing about here, and we had a guest evangelist who was right there, and people were walking through to be prayed for. Now, I'd been around enough at that point that, like, that wasn't totally new, but people were walking through. And this man walked up on a cane, like, with the, uh, the, he was blind, right? So he had the cane with the, the colors on it or whatever. And his eyes, I'm watch, watching him walk up, helping him, and his eyes were like milky. Like that's the best way, they were just milky. And he walked up, and the minister was here, and he turned around because when he prayed for him, I saw in his eyes, and guys, literally, I saw the milkiness dissolve and go away instantly. And the man could see. Right there. Everybody say miracles. Miracles, signs, and wonders. And when you read the book of Acts, we see all those things happening. Miracles, signs, and wonders. Things that happened that were supernatural, divine, that could not have happened by a man or a woman orchestrating them. They had to be from a God who loves us and cares about the details of our life. And so people equate the Holy Spirit to mysterious, a little spooky, mysterious, unknowable. And although the Holy Spirit is supernatural, I bet say he's supernatural. He's not mysterious and unknowable. In fact, the Bible talks about and defines and clearly demonstrates how the Holy Spirit works in a believer's life. In the church of Jesus Christ, there's no mystery. Now, there's mystery only in the sense of, like, we know the will of God, according to the word, and we know how, what the Holy Spirit's role is. We'll talk about that again here in a minute. 
but does the Holy Spirit always do everything that's in the book? Like, be, and, and let me just address it real quick. Why does like everybody not get healed? Why doesn't like everybody that gets prayed for, like this man that I was back here, why does everybody not get healed? Well, because we live in a fallen world. Doesn't change the will of God, but when sin entered the world, all of a sudden God's perfect will was no more in the earth until we get a new heaven and a new earth, as the Bible talks about. And then everything, like heaven, that's perfect. Like then everything will happen exactly perfectly according to the will of God, the word of God. But why we're in this life, everybody say this life, we can believe according to the word of God and know what God wants to do and we don't have to allow circumstances or experience to cause our faith to waver. Because we know what the word says and we know what his will is. And so according to that, that's why the, the, the working of the Holy Spirit is not spooky and mysterious and like, oh no, I don't know what the Holy Spirit's gonna do. Well, he wants to heal, so pray for healing. He wants to restore a relationship, so pray for that. He wants to guide and direct you, so pray. He wants to comfort you. We got guarantees in the Bible, that's why he came. Pray for exactly that, and you can believe by faith that he'll do exactly what he said he will do. And so last week I answered four questions, and I was prepping and ready to go, and I knew where I was supposed to go in the sermon, and like where this week was supposed to go, we've got next week. You may know what we're doing next week. For the city. And I'm gonna talk about that a little bit, but Holy Spirit would not allow me to move too quickly past what I taught last week. In fact, to the degree, I'm getting ready to recap it to you. This sermon's gonna have like two parts. The first half, or a little more, maybe. I'm gonna re-preach to you exactly what I taught last week. Why? Because, well, it is good. <laughs> what, I'm not good, but the word's good. Why am I doing that? Because repetition is the motor of learning. Without repetition, there can be no mastery in your life. Like, not mastery of you being perfect and all that, but you understanding a mastery of learning and understanding a revelation of the power of the Spirit of God living on the inside of you. This is not, I talked about it last week, but this talking about the Holy Spirit, you know, have you ever checked out in the cart? And maybe you clicked on some link and like, hey, sign up for this thing. And you check out and you do all the payment information and they click here to com complete your order. And then the next screen comes up. And what's it say? For just this much money, you can add this to your cart. <laughs> Special offer, one time offer. Click here to add to your cart. It's a, you've already purchased this, but it's an add-on. It's a bonus. And you get to choose whether you want that or not. And some of you always pick it because it's a deal and a bargain. And some of you never do because they're trying to take my money. <laughs> and then funny people, we're, we're just funny creatures. But guys, that's how many people treat the Holy Spirit. I got saved. Thank you, Jesus, for my salvation. I'm saved, I'm redeemed. I've become a new creation in Christ Jesus. And then we look and we say, oh, the Holy Spirit, hmm. That was my fault, making sure you're awake. You woke up right there. <laughs> he wasn't awake, he had his head down. He was like, whoa. <laughs> and we're like, hmm, do I wanna, I mean, I got salvation. Got my ticket to heaven. Woo, that's what I came for. Do I, do, do I wanna have the Holy Spirit? I mean, he might send me to China. He might make me pray for people in Sam's Club. Where's David Caliphant? Yeah. David, David's in the back there. David has a Sam's Club ministry. Every time he goes to Sam's Club, like people, like people that work there will literally come up to him and ask him to pray for him because he's done it so many times. Yeah, that's awesome. But some of you are like, I got salvation, but I don't want a Sam's Club ministry. Ooh, that's awkward. I don't want to do that. I mean, would the Holy Spirit make me like get up in my school and like preach in the, in the lunchroom? Would the, would the Holy Spirit make me run my business different? Because, you know, the Holy Spirit, one of his jobs is conviction. Yeah, I'm like, ah. no, I think I'm good. I won't check the box. I'll just stick with salvation. I'm saved. I'm a Christian. I got the label. On, so Guys, Holy Spirit in you, flowing through you, yeah. doing all the things that I'm going to talk about here is like not optional. Right. Look at somebody say, not an option. 
In fact, you, Romans 14, 17. I don't think I read this one last week. Romans 14, 17. For the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking. Like, what's eating and drinking? It's life. It's flesh. It's like the things of life. Like, you, you, you got to eat and drink every day. In fact, some of you are having a hard time focusing because you're like, I got to eat. My children after church, it's like they, they've never been fed before. I love you guys. But they're like, feed us. For the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking, but of, but of righteousness, peace. How many could use a little more of that? Joy. Woo! Who wants some joy? Righteousness, peace, and joy. Where? Where? How? I want all that. How? In the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit is everything, guys. This is how we live and move and have our being in him. This is not optional. This is not just if you want to raise the dead and heal the sick. This is how you live every single day. This is how when you're having a breakdown and you're like crying and you're moaning and groaning about different things in your life and then you laugh at yourself because you're like, oh, wait, I got Holy Spirit. Why am I crying? Like, really? I mean, she said it. I'm not being mean. She said it basically. Aletha did when she was up here. She said, she said. This is everything. This is how you get through the hard things. Everything. So let's answer four questions real quick. Just recap. What is the Holy Spirit? It's a big one. Man, some of you preached in the sermon for last week. I like it. Some of you took notes. Here we go. The Holy Spirit, you can help me out as we go here. He's a person. He is not a force, a thing, or an it. He is not Christian magic. May the force be with you. Although lightsabers would be cool. I mean, he's not a force, a thing, and it. He's a person. And more specifically, he's the third person of the Trinity. And last week I quoted a bunch of scriptures. You can go back and get them. He's the third person of Trinity. He was there in the beginning of everything. And he was there at the creation. He was there at the baptism of Jesus. I read all these scriptures last week. He is the third person of the Trinity. And that Trinity thing is hard to understand, but there is God the Father, there is God the Son, and there is God the Holy Spirit. Three distinct individuals, but one Godhead. One Godhead. Everybody say one. And the Holy Spirit is part of that Godhead. He is a person. Therefore, he operates as a gentleman. He is not going to force himself on you. No one can lay hands on you and for baptize the Holy Spirit. Like, nobody can do that. You have to make a choice to receive. I, I, he desires to be in relationship with you. Relationship. You can't force relationship. You have to choose it. You must choose it. So he's a person. He's going to operate as a gentleman. He's the third person in the Trinity. What is the Holy Spirit? He's not a what? It's a he. Say he is a person. Number two, question. Why, why, why did God promise the Holy Spirit? Why did he promise him? Here's Why? Because he knew you couldn't do it on your own. We sang the song about he's my victory, he's my victory, he's my victory. How many of you have lived many years of your Christian life not feeling victorious? Can we just, we all belong here, we all love, but can I raise both hands and my feet? Like, years of your Christian life without victory. Might I propose to you and to myself the reason we lived there? It's because we weren't work, walking in the spirit the way he desired us to walk in the spirit. We were not tapped. We got salvation, got our ticket to heaven, but we didn't tap into the power that he gave us at salvation to walk in the spirit. Uh, talks in Galatians 5, like walk in the spirit, keep in step with the spirit, right? So this, the, the Holy Spirit... He's not a, a man-made religion conjured up thing. It's in the Bible. In fact, let me read you a couple of verses. He's a promise from God the Father that came through the Son, John 16, 7. Nevertheless, this is Jesus talking, red letters, I tell you the truth, it is to your advantage. Look at somebody say, I got an advantage. 
It is to your advantage that I go away. Jesus himself, the, the Jesus who healed the sick and raised the dead and, and cast out devils and fed the 5,000, did all the miracles. He said, Jesus himself said, it is to your advantage that I, supernatural, amazing son of God, it is to your advantage that I go away. For if I don't go away, the helper, the Holy Spirit, will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. See, Jesus was with them. Everybody say with them. Holy Spirit would be in them. If you're saved and you have a relationship with Jesus, just could you tap your chest here? Say, he's in me. When was the last time you brought your awareness up to say, he's in me? He, whoa, whoa. The same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is living inside of me. That was Alifa's moment, right? That's what she described. Oh, wait, why am I freaking out here? Wait, <laughs> he's in me. It is so easy to be a Christian and to be in this walk for a while, many of you, and to get moving and doing and being on your own. I was prepping this sermon last week and I texted the team because I said, guys, I, I had to have a moment of repentance because it's so, I've been doing this for 25 years. It's so easy to get up and speak and forget that I'm only doing it by the spirit, that I am nothing without him. And I said, I had to have a moment of repentance to remind myself that it's him. It's him. It's him. It's all 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 him. And I just texted the team and I said, maybe I'm not the only one. Because it's so easy to get there. Luke 24, 49 says, behold, I send the promise of my father. Everybody said the promise. I send the promise of my father upon you, but tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you are endued with power from on high. I said it last week, but just a reminder, they had to tarry because the Holy Spirit hadn't been sent yet. You ain't got to wait. You don't have to, because the Holy Spirit came. Everybody say, he's here. here. So you don't have to wait. But they tarry so that you can be endued with power from on high. That word endued means to clothe with. Hey, Caleb, come up here. I want to borrow you, sir. Endued, clothe, to put on. And so God wants to endue Caleb with power. Power. When you get saved, we'll get down to this. You get all the Holy Spirit. But like when the Holy Spirit gets all you, go ahead, let's put this on. Yeah. Here we go. Here we go. Looking good. Yeah. Clothed with power. Yeah. But see, before, if, if he's like not doing that and he's on his own, like he's trying to get victory on his own. Like he's saved, but he ain't got all the power. He's not clothed with power. Yeah. Can Caleb overcome temptation when he ain't got power? Can Caleb get through a week and stay saved without, like, it might just, like, it's hard to stay saved sometimes. Don't look at me like I'm crazy. Come on. Daily, thank you. I got to be a husband that loves sacrificially. I had to take my son to 8.30 a.m. Saturday basketball practice and stay saved. Help me, Jesus. 8.30 a.m. I love you. But you, you, you can't do it on your own. You need to be clothed with. But see, I can't, like, put this on him. He's, gotta, he's got to cooperate. But if he doesn't want to and he walks away, and, like, Holy Spirit, go keep walking, keep walking. And I want to, Holy Spirit's like, wait, 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 wait. I want to clothe you. And he's like, no, I got this. Some of you have been telling God that you got this, and you've been acting like I've been doing this a while, and I know what I'm doing. I... Stop it! Stop, stop that idiocy, okay? You need to be clothed with power. Now, come back, Caleb. I wasn't done yet. Um, you're, you're, you're awesome. But some of you act like, well, Ms. Gwen, I mean, I mean, Ms. Gwen, she got like, not the suit, like it's custom tailored and like, she's like, 
she's like, don't you come on? Like, I don't know, what's the most expensive? Like, she got a, like, she got a suit, right? Like, she come with a whole nother power. And you're like, I mean, I, I got clothing, but like, it's, it's a little more jean jacket. Here you go. And you're like, I got power, but I ain't got Miss Gwen power. It's the same power. It's the same promise. He is no respecter of person. It is the same power. Everybody say same power. Everybody say it's the same promise. There ain't no jean jacket Holy Spirit, people. That was a jean jacket, not water, Lenny. There ain't no jean jacket Holy Spirit. Everybody say, I got power. Say, I'm clothed. But you must choose to cooperate with that. And when you forget that and you try to do it on your own, and I'm going to minister to Caleb here because we had a little conversation. I walked over just to, to greet him, and he, he shared something with me. I don't think you'll mind this, but he, he made a comment. He said, I need to get stronger. And I was like, no, 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 no. Does he need to get stronger or does he just need to trust more? He just needs to be clothed a little bit more. He just needs to be like, he, does he need to get stronger? Or does he mean in his weakness, the Bible says, he's made strong. Does he need to get stronger? Yes or no? Does he have all the strength he needs? Yes or yes? Yeah. Some of you have been trying to get stronger, get better. Get more discipline. Stop it. Stop it. You, you ain't that good. You can sit down. You can keep the jacket on if you want. You know, just stay, walk, be clothed with power. You can take it off. Why did he send the Holy Spirit? He's a promise. He sent the Holy Spirit so you could have the power. What does the Holy Spirit do? Question number three now. What's the Holy Spirit do? Is this helping anybody? Does it feel like the same sermon from last week or is it okay? Little repetition is good, right? Let me give you six things the Holy Spirit does. You will notice absent from the list and the role of the Holy Spirit is giving you goosebumps in a service. May happen, but it's not his job. Knocking you on your tushy at the altar may happen, not his job. I gotta say this because this, this, as a Methodist kid growing up, like all y'all falling out in the spirit, like freak me out. Why does that happen? If it's not the Holy Spirit's job, Mark, then why does it happen? People are faking it, aren't they, Mark? No, no, no. When you go to heaven and you walk into the presence of God Almighty for the first time, into the throne room of God himself, to worship along with everybody else. Are you going to be like, hey, God, um, hey, I got a list of questions. No. Like, hey, could you explain? Tell me why this happened and tell me why that happened and why didn't you do this for me, God? Like, I asked and I told you when you were supposed to and you didn't do it. You didn't show up for me. Or, or when you walk into the presence of God, you won't be like. <laughs> Shouldn't have done it. I almost held back. Okay. I almost held back with a full prostrate. Prostrate. Did I say prostrate? I did. I didn't say prostate. So I just stayed out here. <laughs> Woo! Can we have fun in church? Listen. So, punchline. So sometimes when God uses a minister of the gospel, a man or a woman, to lay hands on someone, to be a conduit of the power of the Spirit of God, the presence of God, the healing power of God. Sometimes when God uses an individual to be a conduit of his power, that presence and power, not the person, but the presence and the power of God, when it's, because the Bible talks about laying hands and being stirred up, all these things, that presence of God gets the same results in the moment as God will in heaven. And so they fall on the tush. That's why you got catchers in church. So, what is the role of the Holy Spirit? Six things real quick. Number one, he comforts us. All these have scriptures, go back next week. John 14, 16, he comforts us. 
I was talking with Miss Darlene before service. How many years? 55? 51 years she was married to her husband and he just passed away a couple weeks ago. And I was saying to her, and she was right here on the second row the week after, why? Because I said, I don't know how people get through without Jesus. And she said, I know. There, there's comfort. Holy Spirit is not an optional add-on for Miss Darlene right now. Holy Spirit's everything because he's the only one who can comfort her in her mourning and her grief. But some of you had a bad week and you're trying to figure it out. Allow Holy Spirit to comfort you. You're going to hurt. In this life, you'll have trouble, the Bible says. But take heart, I've overcome the world. Allow him to do his job. Stop trying. You're awesome. But stop trying to do his job. Allow him to comfort you. Number two, he will, I don't know if I need to say it or convict us. John 16, 8, convict us. I talked about that a little earlier. Because some of y'all don't want all, none of that. You want dangerous prayer? Holy Spirit, convict me. Holy Spirit, show me what I can't see. I quote Psalm 139, 23 and 24. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Just pray this. Psalm 139, 23 and 24, write it down. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive way in me. Yes. See, that's an Old Testament scripture expressing New Testament job of the Holy Spirit. Show me, Holy Spirit. Convict me, show me. Shine the light, show me. And then the last part of the verse is the hope, the beauty. And then lead me in the way everlasting. Lead me into freedom. Lead me into clarity. Lead me into healing. Lead me into wholeness. Lead me into integrity. Some of you business owners, you need to be praying that prayer and you need to change some things in your business when the Holy Spirit tells you to. It's not yours. It's his. Stop acting like it's yours. I'm a business owner as well. So like I, I'm talking to myself as well. I got to pray this prayer more often. Yeah, amen. Show me, Holy Spirit. Convict me. It's part of his job. Not to bring shame, guilt, and condemnation. It's another thing I said to Caleb. I said, listen, buddy, like if it feels heavy, how many have felt heavy, heaviness? Like this week, right? If you feel heavy, if you feel guilt, if you feel shame, if you feel like I'm mess, missing the mark, I failed, none of that is Holy Spirit. Oh, just take a deep breath. Do you know what the Holy Spirit does? He gives hope. He gives life. He gives comfort. He gives peace, righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. That's Holy Spirit. The thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He come to give you Life and life more abundantly. So if when he convicts, he also brings the goods for the other side of it. He guides us, John 16, 13. All you planners out there, I love you. I need you people in my life because like I'm a visionary, but I'm not like a, like boom, 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 boom. I need people like that around me. But you know what I need more than that? Him. Him to guide me. Some of you don't know what to do. Tap in. He will guide you. Uh, number four, he changes our character. Galatians 5, 22 through 23. Number five, he gives us spiritual gifts to help others. 1 Corinthians 12, 4 through 11. And number six, he gives us power. I could talk about all those because Holy Spirit is everything. You can't live without him. We live and breathe and we have our being in him. And when the Holy Spirit showed up, Acts 1.8, he said, you're gonna receive power. Holy Spirit showed up, one word to describe what he brought when he showed up, and it was what? Power. That right there was the birth of the New Testament church. He brought power. It's a big part of the why did he send Holy Spirit? The result of being filled with the Holy Spirit is a supernatural life. That's fun. 
Supernatural. And again, that's not just laying hands on the sick and they recover. I mean, that's pretty cool. But that's being able to lead with integrity and clarity and vision. It's being able to, Rick and I was talking before service. He's in retirement and he's like, I'm getting used to retirement. Guess what? Holy Spirit gets to guide and direct him in that. And he's leaning into that. But it's a whole new season of life for him. Holy Spirit, guide me, teach me, direct me, fill me. He can't do retirement without Jesus. Just like you can't do whatever you've been trying to do without him, without the spirit of God on the inside of you directing you. Okay, um, I gotta get to part two, so we gotta finish with question number four. You ready? And this is important because, by the way, this morning, Holy Spirit spoke to me as I was journaling. He said, there's no rush. Some of you are like, oh, great, Uh oh. I ain't trying to impress anybody. This is not my first time. Amen. Not my first rodeo. <laughs> Holy Spirit is not a, a feel good, like I'm not trying to stir. I talked about two streams. I'll talk about, the, I talked about the conference. I'll talk about for the city here in a minute. Did we preach two weeks about Holy Spirit to get you to do something? No. Should you do something? Yeah. But did I preach? No, I preached so that you can live the life that God called you to. So you can walk on a daily basis the way he's called you to walk in righteousness, peace, and joy so that you can walk in the kingdom the way you're supposed to walk in the kingdom. This is everything, everything. Salvation first, primary. But when you get saved, you get all the Holy Spirit. So, Question number four, what about the baptism of the Holy Spirit and speaking in tongues? Uh, let me answer something that I don't think I did good at last week. What is tongues? What is tongues? Tongues is a gift from God available to every believer. Everybody say it's a gift. It is a divine, supernatural language given by God when we're baptized in the Holy Spirit. And because it's a divine supernatural language, it is a language of the spirit, not the mind. Spirit, not the mind. So when you pray in tongues, you are praying from your spirit or from your mind? Spirit. From your spirit. So when you and I have a conversation, like the words I'm speaking to you now are coming from my mind hopefully directed by the Holy Spirit, but they're coming from my mind. I know what I'm saying. I'm forming words. I am aware that I'm saying words about forming words. Right now, I know what I'm saying. I can say whatever I want. Purple, Pinocchio, chicken monkeys. I'm saying words from my mind. But when I am praying in the Spirit, it's not coming from my mind. It is coming from my spirit. And that's, that's a little hard to wrap your head around, right? Because it's not <laughs> in your mind. And as a Methodist boy growing up, I was like, what is going on here? And I knelt down in my uh, room at, the, at my college down the road here at Asbury. And uh, I prayed for, to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And I, I became fully persuaded and fully convinced that this was a good gift because James says, every good and perfect gift comes from above. And I became fully persuaded that it was a good gift, that it came from above, and that I desired to receive it. And I remember kneeling down in that dorm room and praying to receive. And when I received the bat, I said, I said, God, I'm not getting up until I'm praying in tongues. I was a little bold. Why? Because it was in the Bible, and I was convinced. So if God, if I'm, he'll do exactly what he said he will do. And when people got baptized in the Holy Spirit, they spoke in tongues. I'm like, all right, God, I'm ready. It's a good thing. I want it. And when I began to speak in tongues, I just began to pray. And I was, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I was like, what was that? Where'd that come from? Because I didn't make the, and I was, I, I have no idea what I just said. I didn't pick those words. And some of you, you said it don't sound like words. Well, it's a divine language, so you're not going to be able to understand it. 
but it's the Holy Spirit. Now, just a quick little thing, and I didn't talk about this last week either, but just to drop in here. When you read about tongues and you look at the gifts of the Holy Spirit in the New Testament, there's a public gift of tongues and there's a private gift. The private gift, he talks about the baptism of the Holy Spirit and everybody speaking in tongues. Notice on the day of Pentecost, there was no interpretation that day because that was the private gift of tongues. God would not contradict himself. So there's a private gift where he talks about in uh, Jude, he talks about praying in the Holy Spirit, build yourself up in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. And this is the private. This is, uh, Paul says, I thank God more than all of you that I speak in tongues, that I pray in tongues. So there's a private prayer language, which is what we're talking about. And then there's a public gift that every time a public gift of tongues is given, what is required? Interpretation, right? And when, and this, these are in the nine gifts of the spirit, okay? This is like, you can't teach everything in a day. Like I tried last week, but you can't teach everything today. So this is a layer that I didn't get to last week. So the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit, there's tongues, the interpretation of tongues and prophecy. These are the three gifts of revelation, tongues, speaking in tongues, the interpretation of tongues and prophecy. Prophecy is a word divinely given from God, right? So when a public gift of tongues is given and it is interpreted, it equals prophecy, okay? So some of you may be confused, like I was coming into this environment as someone who didn't grow up in all this, like, hey, wait, you can't pray in tongues, you gotta have interpretation. But the, as you read the Bible, and this is, again, I was reading the Bible and reading the Bible, reading the Bible, persuaded. And so I talked about this last week, just a quick little recap. When you get saved, you get all the Holy Spirit. Um, this is the Holy Spirit. My daughter's getting ready to run. <laughs> oh, oh, I like this. This is not that. Oh, that is a nice touch, Ella. You better hurry. You better hurry. <laughs> ah, not quick enough on the umbrella. That, Wow. <laughs> Somebody please take a picture of that because I need to document that. So when you get saved, <laughs> you get all the Holy Spirit. This is the Holy Spirit, okay? Oh, you couldn't hear the rain. When you get saved, you get all the Holy Spirit. No umbrellas over here. And this is you. You're the towel, okay? When you get saved, you get all the Holy Spirit. When you get baptized in the Holy Spirit or filled with the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit gets all of you. Right. And, and why is that a significant thing? Because two things. One, it's a, a trust issue. Can I trust God? Can I trust the word that every good and perfect gift comes from above, yeah. right? And then can I have the faith to believe that God will do exactly what he said he would do? Yeah. So when you get saved, you get all the Holy Spirit. When you get baptized, the Holy Spirit gets all of you. And when, when you get baptized, what happens? You get immersed. Baptized means to immerse. And when you get immersed, it is not convenient. It's not comfortable. It's, it's not like, oh, on your own timetable. It, it's not anything but immersion. And it's a little messy. <laughs> Alifa, I'll... I'll I'll come, Holy Spirit coming for you. I think my worship team needs to pray through a little bit. So, <laughs> this is kind of fun. You're baptized, you're immersed, and everywhere you go, you drip with the presence of God. There's no hiding it. Like the towel can't drip without the immersion in the Holy Spirit. But once you get immersed, once you fully surrender, then you drip everywhere you go. And you carry his presence with you everywhere you go. You drip. It's surrender. Everybody say surrender. Okay, you can put the umbrella down. I'll, I'll, uh, I, I will not come after, the Holy Spirit will not come after you. Listen, why did I come back to this and take all the time? Did some of you that were here last week, did you get something new? Did the Holy Spirit speak something new to you? Here's the thing. When, 
when the Holy Spirit came, and you go back to Acts 1.8, but you'll receive what? Power. What? Power. Now, and I read the verse in Jude earlier, or I quoted the verse, that you're, the Amplified says, rise like an edifice higher and higher. How? Praying in the Holy Spirit. So praying in the Spirit is a gift that builds you up. When, when Jesus sent the power, he didn't send the power to build an organization. He sent the power to build people, to build you, to strengthen you. You're never going to be more stronger than when you are immersed and you are fully surrendered to the Holy Spirit. That's where your strength comes from. It does not come from you. It doesn't come from you getting stronger, Caleb. It comes from being clothed and dude. Man, I, I could take the jacket and dump the jacket and then put it on you. That's a, you might do that next time. Immersed, right? It's not just like a little dabble. There's a sound man there. Hello. Testing. Is it back? Don't put water on a microphone. I'm going <laughs> to... This side. It's not a little dabble, do ya? It's everything. Everybody say everything. But he didn't just send the Holy Spirit to build you up. But you will receive power. Everybody say, I have the power. There's power inside of me. The same power that raised Jesus from the dead, live it in you. The Bible says in John that the works that Jesus did, you're going to do greater works than these. How in the world is that possible? Holy Spirit inside of me, the same power that raised him up is flowing in my veins. And so he's going to build you up. But that's not all that he sent the power for. The Holy Spirit, you receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And you will be my, what's the word? Witnesses. You will be my witnesses, telling people about me everywhere. Everywhere. At the grocery store, at Sam's Club, at the gas station, in your neighborhood, in your home, on the court, on the field at the beach. You mean you don't take a vacation from Jesus? No, at the beach, tell them about Jesus. You'll be witnesses telling people about me everywhere in Jerusalem, throughout Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Jesus gave us power to be witnesses so that people can know him. That happened in Acts 1 and then in Acts 2, listen to this. Peter, there's a bunch of people, Holy Spirit came, all this came, like power of God, presence of God, tongues of fire. And a lot of people are standing around like, what in the world just happened? They're feeling the presence of God. They know it's him. It's undeniable. It was like dripping all over the room. Undeniable. And a lot of people are sitting around. They don't know what to do. But Peter and the apostles knew. Then Peter stepped forward. Everybody say, step up. Oh, no, no, no. Come on now. Say, like, say step up. He stepped forward with the 11 other apostles. Why did they step forward? Because they knew, because Jesus told them, Holy Spirit's gonna come, power's gonna come. Wait for it. You can't do what I've called you to do. Tarry for a little bit and wait for the Holy Spirit because if you go out there and try to do what I've called you to do, to be who I've called you to be, without the Holy Spirit, you're gonna fail. You're gonna be frustrated. You're gonna be disappointed. You're gonna live a Christian life defeated. And that's not my design and my will for your life. Wait for the Spirit and don't go out until you get the Spirit. So they knew when the Spirit came, it was go time. Go time. Like, oh, oh, they were like, like horse in the gate, you know, wait, like, like Holy Spirit. And he's like, stepped up. And what did he do right after that? He preached the first sermon in the name of Jesus, empowered by the Spirit of God. And what was the point of that whole sermon? It's beautiful. Go to Acts 2 and read it. Salvation. 
3,000 people got saved. And it says right after that, and people were added to their number daily. Why did he send the Spirit? To make you stronger, to make the church of Jesus Christ stronger. He sent the Holy Spirit so we could be witnesses to everybody about the goodness of God, the love of God, that we don't have to get cleaned up and perfect to receive salvation. The message is salvation. He sent the Spirit not just so you could overcome sin and temptation. That's weak sauce. Like, sin and temptation? He's like, I mean, you can dabble, do you, on that? Like, like Holy Spirit, like, I can wipe that out easy. But if you want to go to the ends of the earth, Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, he's like, you better get dumped. You better be dripping because you can't do that on your own. That's why we're doing the Two Streams Conference. Because two streams got to come together. That's why next Sunday we are going out into the city to tell people about the Jesus that loves them. Could drop my hand off to move my phone. Listen to this testimony. This is uh, from Brandon and Kim. Uh, they said they'd met Amy and Jesse during our mobile outreach months prior. This is a For the City testimony. They came to the For the City event. And as we shared a message of God's extravagant love illustrated in his unique pursuit of each one of us, they were touched powerfully by God and both gave their lives to the Lord. Everybody say salvation. Now listen, I want to be clear about something. Our next, so next Sunday is for the city. The Sunday after that, are we going to come in and have stories of hundreds and hundreds of salvations that happen? Actually, probably not. I mean, that would be awesome. I, I can put my, fi- but there's only one event where we are explicitly preaching the gospel and giving an invitation for people to respond. Do you know what we're doing at the rest of the events? Everything else we're doing? Yeah. Everywhere we go, we dripping. We're dripping. We're leaving the residue of the presence of God, the love of God. Everywhere you step, you're the temple of the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of God's living on the inside of you. You can't go anywhere without the presence. Like, when you step there, it's holy ground. So whether it's putting mulch out at the Thompson Hood Veterans Center or packing suitcases here in this building, you're putting a little, pre- you're like dripping on the suitcase and the clothes. The presence of God. And we're planting seeds. See, it wasn't the first interaction with Jesse and I can't remember the other name. It was seeds planted, seeds planted, seeds planted, love planted, service planted, that then the moment came when they responded. Do you think our city needs some dripping? They don't need a bunch of church people going out to do something to feel good about yourself. Let me repeat that. Our city does not need some church people going out into the streets to do something to make you feel good. Correct your perspective right now. You are going into the streets. We are going into the streets to drip the presence of God, to carry the love of God. They need Jesus. And the life you live is sometimes the greatest sermon you'll ever preach. Is this a sermon just for next weekend? Everybody say it's a lifestyle. It's a lifestyle. And that is my challenge. Let's not let this be a conference, an event. Holy Spirit said, you got to hang out here. You got to let this. This is foundational. And many of you here are aware of the Spirit of God, the power of the Spirit of God. Maybe many of you baptized in the Holy Spirit. But as I said last week, sometimes life can ring you out, ring the presence out, ring the hope out, ring, ring the love out of you. And then there's, there's no more. Just life's hard. Life is difficult. 
So some, some of you need, re, you need redunked. In the New Testament, you read the disciples, many of them, they got baptized again. How often can you do this? Admit that you just... I didn't do it, Lenny. I didn't do it. <laughs> Lenny is our sound man, if some of you are missing the jokes happening between us. Because he told me, Mark, if you dunk that water and you go over this speaker again, he's going to come up and throw himself over top of it because... <laughs> I've stayed away from it. There's water on the, where? I love our team. Don't you love our dream team? Okay. Next week, we, you all ready to go drip? So today, some of you, you I'm going to get do an order call here in a second. And we're going to close out. This is for you. This is for life. And so some of you, maybe you don't have a relationship with Jesus. You haven't surrendered to him. We're going to take care of that in a second. And some of you, you've been baptized in the Holy Spirit. Some of you, you, you you've been filled. Because you, when you got the Holy Spirit, you got all of the Holy Spirit. When you get baptized, he gets all of you. Some of you, to be honest, you grew up in different traditions, and they talk about entire sanctification. That was mine. Being fully sanctified as a second work of grace, Right? Some of you, you're baptized and you're filled. I'm not saying you're not, because that kind of kind of ticked me off a little bit when my wife, when we started dating, she's like filled with the Holy Spirit. I was like, I'm filled. What are you talking about? So I'm not questioning whether or not you're filled, but maybe you didn't know that you could have this whole personal prayer language where you can speak a divine words and pray perfect prayers. When I don't know what to pray, I pray in the Holy Spirit because it's a perfect prayer. It's a heavenly language. It's not coming from my goofy mind. It's coming from my spirit and the spirit living on the inside of me. So I'm able to pray perfect prayers and without me doing anything else but praying in the spirit, it's building me up in my most holy faith, rising like an edifice higher and higher. It's edifying and building me up. That's what he didn't give it for anybody else but for you to edify and build you up. And when you're walking and dripping around on the streets next week, I want you to be praying in the Holy Spirit. Don't freak out any believers or unbelievers. Like you be praying under your breath, but you're dripping. You're dripping. You're being led by the Holy Spirit of God. Every now and then something's going to happen. You're going to be like, oh no, they needed more. <laughs> See, that's, there you go, Joe. Like you should have sat on the front row over here. Umbrella people protecting from the Spirit of God. Now, some of you, you never received that gift, baptism of the Holy Spirit. We can take care of that too. We're not going to take long here. But here's the first thing I want to do. Listen, if you're here today and you've never surrendered your life to Jesus, you've never had that moment, you, you feel far from God right now, and you don't know that if you died today, you'd spend eternity in heaven. That's all salvation is. It's removing the gap, the distance between you and a loving heavenly Father. All you have to do is say, yes, Lord, I'll receive your love. You don't have to deserve it. You don't have to earn it. You don't have to clean up. You just say, yes, Lord. I receive your love. I receive your grace. Grace is unmerited, undeserved, unwarranted favor. And you just have to say yes to him. Come home, come back into relationship. I want you to bow your heads right now. If you're in here and you feel far away from God and you wanna come back home, you wanna come into relationship with Jesus, remove the gap, the separation between you and him, now's your moment. And all you have to do is make a decision. I can't do it for you. Just like Holy Spirit, I can't force Jesus on you. You have to choose to begin that relationship. Maybe you ran away from it and it's time to come back, time to come home. But on the count of three, God, give them courage and give them faith to respond to your unconditional love right now. Give them faith, Jesus, give them faith. Every good and perfect gift comes from above. God, let them respond to your love right now. So all I'm gonna do is ask you to raise your hand on the count of three and we're gonna pray for you right where you're at. Say yes to him. One, two, three. Just slip your hand up. We're going to pray for you. See multiple hands. Love seeing men, grown men responding to Jesus. I see two of them already. Anybody else need to say yes? You need to come home. Hallelujah. Don't miss your moment for anybody else. For whatever's cooking in the crock pot, it's you and him right now. If you need to say yes, one, two, three, just raise your hand. I want you all to pray this prayer with these two 
grown men who have responded in faith to Jesus. Everybody pray this out loud like it's your first time. Say, dear Jesus. Oh, come on, a little louder. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for accepting me just the way I am. I believe that Jesus died on the cross for the penalty of my sins so that I could be saved, so that I could be in relationship with you. I believe it. I receive Jesus now in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on. Woo! Yes! Stand up, stand up, stand up. Okay, so, listen, I, I said this last week. We've taught the Word of God, the Word... When you teach the word, the word demonstrates what you taught. So this isn't going to take long. But if, if you, one, have been wrung out, or two, you've never been baptized with evidence speaking in tongues, and you'd like that, listen, if you're still not convinced yet, you don't have to come up today. Because some other people tried to pray for me before I was convinced, and it, it don't work. Because it's a gift I have to choose. So if you need to, like I did, Get in a word and study the word and then let the scales fall from your eyes. When you're convinced, you will receive. I had a friend who received baptism. He's like, I think I received it like a couple years ago. But last Sunday, there was a fresh dipping. And he said, it's, it's been power in my life this week to overcome situations. It built me up. It made me stronger. So either of those, if you want to receive or listen, can I just precurse? All of y'all can come up with what I'm about ready to say. If you want to drip a little bit more everywhere you go and be more aware of the presence, the power of God on the inside of you, whether you've signed up for For the City. Listen, if you haven't signed up for For the City, do it, do it, do it, do it, because we need to drip together. Our city needs us, amen? So there's a table out there. Stop by and sign up. Come next week. Listen, I didn't say this. I got to do this just real quick. Next week, you're going to come in. We're not having a whole church service. This is what will practically happen. You'll come in. There'll be a registration table out there. If you got your For the City shirt, wear it next week. Come ready. If you don't have one, come. We're going to give you a T-shirt. We're going to register, make sure everybody signed in so we know who's going out on teams. But literally what happens is we come into this room, we sing a couple songs, we worship, we receive an offering, and we give a charge, and we say, hey, let's go drip on our city. And we go out to six, I think six or seven. You guys can put them up if you got them. Seven. Seven different events that we are going into. Seven different locations. Some of them are here. Some of them are out. We need more volunteers for Tom, Thompson Hood, which is landscape and mulch and stuff. And for Miss Pat's farm, we go out because she's a widow and we want to take care of Miss Pat because we love Miss Pat. And the Bible told us to take care of her. And so we need more volunteers there. We need more men's clothes and we need more suitcases for a couple of ministries where we're packing up suitcases. Do not miss the opportunity to do that stuff. Okay. Okay.